Hello. Today I'm going to tie for you a peeping caddis. There are streams in Pennsylvania where you turn over the rocks and there are literally thousands of those little tubes uh, where caddis larvae kind of live and grow. And here, this is a picture of an actual larva that we're trying to represent. And it's important, take note here, and I'll point out something later. We're gonna do this one on a size 16. I think a lot of the ones I look at are size 18. A key ingredient here is this craft yarn I found in kind of that nice green color. And I'm gonna take a single strand of it. And then for legs, I'm gonna use this embroidery thread or yarn, and I'm gonna separate it. I'm gonna add a little lead-free wire to um, fill out the body, create a little bit of a taper. We're gonna use six aught, uh, dark thread, dark brown thread, and a little pale dun to mix in later to add the right color. So I have about an inch of that yarn sticking out. I just kind of set it on fire and let it burn its way back to the tweezers. And it makes a nice little bulbous black head. I'll kind of zoom in and give you a better look at that. I'm going to tie two strands of that embroidery thread just behind that head um, and then trim them to length. And if you remember the picture, this is kind of an important point, or it was for me. The legs actually come from way out by the head. Most of the peeping caddis patterns show those legs. They tie them off the bend of the hook. They'll leave the, the caddis extend. They'll have various methods of doing that. But the uh, legs will come from the shank of the hook or back by the case. And they're really out by the end. That bothered me, so I came up with this method. So in order to make sure that that embroidery thread stays in place, I just soak it with a little um, head cement and spread out the legs a little bit. And I can trim them later. Those are probably a little on the long side and I might adjust them when we're all done. And uh, so there we have our uh, hook in the vise and we have a good thread base down. That's the six aught dark brown. And I have the lead free wire. I took a short piece of that and squeeze the end in a pair of pliers to kind of create a little flat area and I can, it'll help me build a little bit of a taper. So I'll use that on one side and break it off. And I also squeeze the other end of that piece of wire so I could just turn it around and uh, use that on the far side of the hook. And we'll get it bound down and work our way back. So you can see we've got a little bit of a rectangular square, not quite a taper yet. And we're, here's our uh, piece of yarn with the head and the legs. And we're going to leave a little, that's probably about an eighth of an inch, maybe three sixteenths of green, uh, that green showing, and then the head and legs beyond it. And the funny thing about this fly, the more you use it, if it gets chewed up and it's missing a leg or whatever, it's still effective. It'll still catch fish. So we'll trim that yarn off and let it help us build the taper. And go ahead and drop down and put a wrap right around the shank. So we'll fill in the low spots, cover up the lead wire a little more. Here's another little thing that I just kind of came up with on the fly. So I'm going to make a, a loop of the darker thread, the heavier darker thread. And we'll double that over and kind of wrap it down, take it to the uh, toward the bend. And we're going to come back and add in a, a doubled piece of that pale done. And I don't know how critical the color is. I'm just trying to make, create a little contrast here. You'll see. So we have that doubled over. That's only eight odd thread. And um, you can see we're starting to get that taper. And if you also notice in the picture, the um, thicker part, the ta taper, it tapers heavier from back to front, um, just a little bit. So we'll fill it in, any low spots, work away the front. And then we'll throw in a whip or two right behind the hook eye just to hold things in place. And this fly really only uses a couple of materials. It's going to drag along the bottom, so you're going to lose a few. But if you get set up, you can uh, mass produce these pretty easily. You can do a bunch of that yarn ahead of time, um, cut and tie a bunch of the legs, and then come back and uh, 
hit them with a head cement. So I gathered up all the thread, the two strands of pale, pale dun and the two heavier strands of brown, put them in a hackle plier and I'm going to give them a little twist. And I'm just going to kind of stop where it looks right to me. So I take a little experimenting, but I'm just trying to create a little bit of a striped effect or have some some light streaks show through, kind of like that, uh, the original, the, the live version of this bug. So we just use the rotary feature, wrap that up to right behind the eye, and we'll, we'll tie it off. Snip off the excess. And I saw it in the camera. There's one tiny piece of fuzz there that uh, we came back and snipped out. And I'll use a couple of turns on this whip finish to kind of square off and finish up the end. So that's it. Uh, there's a lot of contrast now. Um, once we add the head, uh, head cement, it soaks in a little bit. It darkens the... Uh, the pale dun thread. After it dried, it did kind of uh, get a little lighter and show up a little better. So we'll get a coat of head cement on there, use a bodkin and push it around, make sure everything's covered. If you prefer UV at this point, um, there's no problem with doing that. You could probably uh, tie these a little quicker if you were using UV and didn't have to wait for everything to dry. So this is the first version where I put the bugs out or the legs out behind the, the head of this bug. And uh, I don't know, I expect it to be every bit as effective as the other versions I did before. And it's only got a couple of materials. It's easy to tie. And if they're a caddis in your stream, um, this thing might just do the trick. And don't be afraid to try cream yarn as well. They, they don't always look that fluorescent green. So if you hung in there to the end and you want to learn more about me, uh, look me up on Amazon, and until next time, be safe.